Welcome! Let's get started with an overview of the big ideas that we'll focus on in this video. First, you'll learn about phonological awareness and why it's so important for developing orthographic mapping and eventually for decoding and recognizing words in print. Then we'll take a closer look at orthographic mapping. Orthographic mapping is not a skill, but instead it's how your brain becomes wired for reading. Before we go into more detail, let's define some terms you will come across here that may be new to you. Phonological awareness is the ability to recognize and manipulate the spoken parts of sentences and words. It includes a lot of different skills related to oral language and learning to read, such as noticing when words rhyme, recognizing alliteration, which is when beginning consonant sound is repeated, like the tongue twister Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, segmenting or sounding out a word, and identifying syllables in a word. It's the combination of these skills at different levels and units of oral language, like words, syllables, onsets and rhymes, and phonemes are all units of oral language, that provide the necessary foundation for learning to read. One of those specific skills is phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is the ability to identify and manipulate individual phonemes, Understanding that the letter D makes both the initial, or first, sound in the word dog and makes the middle sound in the word ladder is an example of phonemic awareness. It's important to remember that phonemic awareness and phonological awareness are not the same thing. You should not use those terms interchangeably. We already defined phonological awareness as a group of skills. Phonemic awareness is one of those skills, specifically related to being able to identify and manipulate sounds or phonemes. Another new term for this video is orthographic mapping. Orthographic mapping is the name for a mental process of learning and storing sound spelling connections, like knowing that the grapheme or letter B makes the B sound. As children's phonemic awareness skills grow over time, their orthographic mapping enables them to effortlessly remember or retrieve those links so that they can sound out words more quickly. The term orthographic mapping comes from the word orthography, which is one of the systems of language like phonology or morphology. Where phonology has to do with units of sound and morphology has to do with units of meaning, orthography has to do with learning letters and linking them to sounds. Decoding is the ability to convert a word from print to speech using knowledge of phoneme-grapheme correspondences. You'll see this word a lot as you continue to learn about reading and literacy development. The term phoneme-grapheme correspondences means the same thing as letter sound knowledge or sound spelling relationships. These are all referring to the same thing, which is learning about the relationships between sounds and letters in English. One way to think about phoneme-grapheme correspondences is as the code that we need to teach students in order to help them learn to read words independently or decode without relying on pictures or other cues. Now that you know your new vocabulary, let's get started. Did you know that reading is not a natural process for the human brain? Human brains have evolved for being able to communicate with other humans as soon as we're born, that can include oral language, as well as signs and gestures, and even pictographs. But your brain doesn't develop a natural reading ability the way that it develops a natural communication ability. In order to decode or read print, the brain needs both visual and auditory information. This information gets processed in two different parts of the brain, called the visual cortex and the auditory cortex. Think about young children around two to four years old starting to learn the letters of the alphabet. They may not be decoding print just yet, but as their phonemic awareness grows, the brain makes connections between seeing letters or combinations of letters as patterns and hearing the sounds that they make. Every one of those connections rewires a tiny part of the brain in a new way that wasn't there before. This is how your brain becomes able to read print. It's not the same as reading fluently or reading for meaning. Children learn to do that at school and with a lot of practice. But without those connections or orthographic maps, reading fluently or reading for meaning aren't possible. Let's take a closer look at those connections that your brain makes between letters and sounds. Once you see a word in print, 
Your brain, if it knows the letters, starts to recognize those letters and match them to sounds that you know. This is very basic decoding. Take the word bed, for example. Your brain, as an adult, has a complete set of orthographic maps of letter-sound relationships that work so quickly, you don't even notice that you're decoding the word. But for someone who's just learning to decode, the process is the same, although much slower. The brain gets visual information from the letters and uses orthographic maps to connect those letters to sounds, and then to sound out the word, b, e, d. So in other words, Orthographic mapping is what we call that process of rewiring tiny parts of the brain to match letters and sounds and decode print. As you saw in our example decoding the word bed, orthographic mapping, or storing and remembering connections between words, letters, and sounds, requires phonemic awareness and letter sound knowledge. These are very early and very essential phonological awareness skills. You already know that orthographic mapping is what enables students to decode print, but it also enables learning spelling rules and patterns, spelling words from memory, and developing sight word and vocabulary knowledge. We've covered a lot of material in this video, so let's review. The two main ideas from this video were that phonological awareness plays a big role in developing orthographic mapping, and that orthographic mapping is how your brain becomes wired for reading. We defined both phonological awareness and phonemic awareness and pointed out why they are not the same thing. We defined orthographic mapping as the mental process of storing words and their sounds for immediate effortless retrieval. It's important to remember that for a lot of children with and without disabilities, that retrieval isn't immediate or effortless right away. All students can benefit from explicit phonemic awareness instruction early on. Lastly, we define decoding as the ability to convert a word from print to speech using knowledge of phoneme-grapheme correspondences. Those connections can also be called orthographic maps. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.